Well, it's day 26 and something's happened in the Big Brother house to cause the entire live stream to be off air for three hours. Now, we won't find out what happened until tonight's eviction show, but let's just say, from what I've heard, it could be quite juicy. Now, before we get into this episode, I just want to say thank you guys very, very much for the support on these videos. If you're liking what you're seeing, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Do all that YouTube stuff, and yeah, basically just give me, um, any indication that you're enjoying what you're seeing. So, let's jump straight into the action and today we started with Jenkin apologising to Chanel for what happened with the lights out. Yeah, I, I still can't believe that that stupid year seven bullshit happened, but I'm grateful that um, Jenkin decided to apologise to Chanel because I just think it proved that out of the sort of four of them that were involved, he's the most mature. And I say that with inverted quotation marks because it's a pinch of salt that's needed when you think about it. However, I do think that he was meaning it as a joke and he didn't intend it in a way that was nasty or spiteful. But obviously he now understands how it came across and... Yeah, I'm just grateful that he apologised, but equally, I'm on to you. Don't fuck with Chanel again, Jenkin. Olivia and Noki spoke about the whole sitch, and it was kind of a meaningless conversation. I won't be, I won't lie to you, like, it was just a bit pointless. I thought that there was a lot of they, they could have spoken about, but Olivia was kind of like, oh, it did hurt me, but, like, I'm over it now, but, like, it did hurt me, but, like, I'm over it now, so don't worry about it, but, but like, it did hurt me. And I was just like, P pick a stance, did it hurt you, or are you over it? Do you know what I mean? Like, you you can't say it, it it still hurts you, but you're over it. Do you know what? It's just, it's, it's a confusing one. It's a bit of a, bit of a puzzle, I won't lie. And I think the, the longer we're getting into the house, the more tensions are starting to flare because you're having to live with people that you actually don't like now. Like, at the start, nobody really knew anyone. So, like, if you didn't like someone, maybe it was just because you didn't know them. But, like, pretty much four weeks into the show, there's no excuse for not knowing someone. If you don't know them, it's probably because you don't like them at all or they just haven't made the effort or you haven't made the effort. So, I don't know. Olivia and Noki, I can't see being friends. It always feels like like, Noki's only friends with her because she, like, wants to hang out with the group. I don't know. It just, it feels weird. It feels really, really weird. And I know I say that a lot, but, like, that whole conversation was just really strange. Really, really strange. Dylan was sat in the diary room and he was saying that if he goes on Friday, he doesn't want to be remembered as the person that lost the plot and sort of caused his own downfall. And as much as I do understand that, I think that he's very sort of naive he's survived two evictions shockingly and I think he's got this kind of thing in the back of his head where he's like the public really like me the public really don't like you Dylan or maybe they or maybe like an unspoken majority like you I don't know but like somebody's saving you or perhaps nobody's saving you because it's vote to evict. No one's even voting for you and you're just getting on by because no one feels that strongly about you. Whereas you've been up against Hallie and Kerry who are two more outspoken people in the house and who have potentially rubbed people up the wrong way. So, I don't know. Maybe you will be remembered as the person who lost the plot. Currently, you're second in command for the, for the villain role. There was a really weird conversation that happened with um, Paul, Olivia, and then there was Yinran there as well, and maybe Matty. But, like, Olivia was offering him a massage, and you could see his eyes just go. And then he went, no, 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 I shouldn't. And then Yinran was like, I'll do it. And he went, all right, then. And then Matty ended up doing the massage. And there was some really... <sighs> uncomfortable imagery involving Paul. Um, pretty sure he was promoting his OnlyFans as well, which... 
But um, yeah, I just thought it was a bit, bit of an odd one. I won't lie. Like he just, what? Mm, yeah, no, no more massages, please. Matty and Paul, no more, please. It's time to talk about Big Brother's Big Button. And I gotta say, this was quite an interesting task. I won't lie. I think there were definitely sort of different um things that they could have done with it. I think there could have been more punishments, um, more prizes maybe. It felt like they didn't do enough with this challenge, but they did enough to fit the highlight show, if that makes sense, which was a little bit of a shame. Um, Dylan was the first, oh, right, let me explain it first. So, you, uh, whenever a sound happens, you have to press the button in the middle of the living room, and you'll either get a punishment, or you'll get a reward, and the rewards were good, I'll give them that. The punishments were not great, I'll be honest, they were quite bad. Um, but equally, I didn't think any of the, them were that bad. Just realised I got stray hair. Um, so like, yeah, uh, Dylan was up first and he um, pressed the button and uh, got everyone free barista made drinks, um, which was quite cool. Although I was a little bit confused because they apparently had already made them and put them in the um, sort of like food storage. What's it called? I can't remember what that room's called. The repository? I can't remember. But um. I just thought, well, hang on a minute. Is everyone already put in their order? Because, like, I, I would want a very specific drink. I wouldn't just want a normal latte, do you know what I mean? I'd want an iced vanilla one. But, yeah, I don't know. Was there, was there like, a little bit cut or something? I don't know. It was it was just a, just a, just a tad strange for me, I'll be honest. Next up, Jenkin hit the button and it went red. And he had the punishment of becoming the house's maid for 24 hours he had to put a little penny on do all the cleaning and washing up and i gotta say i thought it was a very very interesting moment um the big brother just loves to punish jenkin and i really think it's actually quite funny especially after what he put chanel through last night kind of deserved it olivia slapped the button and she received a music party for the house i think it went on for like 10 minutes or something um there are a few interesting things that happened during the music party um jordan um left the room went to go lie down but then came and joined but then went upstairs and was kind of watching matty had taken his shirt off and he was kind of like this through the through the glass um not literally but yeah, he was looking up every now and again and it was the editing was making it look like he was looking at Matty. I don't know if he actually was. Um however and when I tell you this was the funniest part of the episode to me because after last Friday when Olivia walked out into the garden and um in the thong but obviously she had clothes on in the thong um and Paul did the like looked her up and down i've been waiting for the producers or the editors to catch something else and they cat they catched they caught a real treat when she was like she was doing she was doing the dancing she was like having a really really good time and then it cuts to paul basically biting his lip i don't think he was but he was he was giving a look and it really did make me chuckle and you could tell that he was kind of looking at her while she danced. I I don't know if that's what the intended um, thing was, but that's the way it was edited. So that's how we have to take things. Um, yeah, Paul, what are you thinking? You got a girlfriend on the outside, mate. And Olivia is uh, Olivia has said that you are not her type. So back off, back off. Henry won a meal um, and he got to take Jordan with him, and they went on their first little cute date, um, I thought it was really, really sweet, and I can tell that Henry has feelings for Jordan, I think Jordan is developing potentially feelings for Henry, but I don't know, but then we found out later on in the episode that Henry has now moved beds, swapped beds with Trish, which I thought was very, very interesting, and when Henry was opening up about sort of the fact that the Matty stuff is making him feel uncomfortable, Jordan went straight over to Matty and cut things off. 
and was like, we need to stop things now. And I, do you know what? So proud of him. So, so happy that he's finally heard Henry and is now sort of putting words into action and sort of stopping things from progressing any further. Do you know what? Big, big props to him because it's difficult. It is. I understand that. And that's, I feel like that's why we've been so frustrated with um, Jordan is because he's finding it difficult and we're finding it difficult to know which, where his head's at. But I'm hoping this is the start of January for real. I'm going to cry. This is so cute. In an interesting twist of events, Trish hit the button and she was asked which of the housemates was easily led. And she said, Tom, I probably would have said the exact same because he does seem like he kind of just follows around somebody um, <coughs> um, and doesn't necessarily have a voice of his own. His opinions are kind of informed by others or his opinions are formed to impress others. And I gotta say, what Big Brother did next was a little bit crazy and a little bit wild, but I also respect them for it. Because Trish said that he was easily led, Big Brother made him the house pet and made him dress up as a sheep. Oh my goodness. Genuinely, genuinely, I did not expect this to happen. I did not expect for one tom to have to dress up in a sheep onesie and stand in a pen outside but i also just didn't expect big brother to make someone do all of that like just because someone said they're easily led like we've been calling tom a sheep for like god knows how long on twitter and now big brother's finally heard us and made it happen albeit they didn't know who trish was going to pick but like come on there was actually a very interesting conversation later on uh, between Trish and Tom and they kind of aired out their frustrations with each other and Trish offered him a coat because obviously it was cold outside. Um, but I just, I have a feeling that they're just two people that aren't just going to, aren't going to get on. Like Tom was basically saying, oh, she's going to go home on Friday. I don't think she is going home on Friday, but I really hope that it isn't Trish and Noki. I really hope it's Paul. I could even have Dylan in the week for, in the house for another week as long as Paul went just to really stab that group in the back because my god they need to be humbled they need humbling the public needs to humble them because I can't have all of them making it to the finale because that will actually wind me up something chronic Matty got what was what should have been potentially the best um, prize, which was that he could choose one person to openly discuss nominations with in the sort of upstairs area, which would be like soundproofed. Tell me why he chose Olivia to go up there with him, knowing full well that he had voted Olivia in the nominations room. Why would you bait yourself out like that? I would have chosen Trish or I would have chosen Jordan, or I would have chosen someone that I'm actually friends with, rather than someone that could potentially use this against me. He got up there and he was like, oh, so we both voted for each other, right? And Olivia went, no. And then he was like, oh my God. I was like, what were you expecting? Of course she was going to nominate Trisha Noki. Why would you expect her to nominate you? I think she's only nominated you once out of the four nominations. So, like, I really think Matty thinks he's more of a more of a sort of threat to people than he actually is. I think most people forget he's even in the house. I have on many occasions until he crops back up and he's annoying again. I'm just, I've had enough. What's going on? Why would you choose Olivia of all the people in the house? I would even choose Paul over Olivia. Because I, if I was in Matty's shoes, I voted for Olivia. Why would I tell her that I attempted to put her up for nominations? I just, ah, oh, craziness. And the last big button, whatever, I don't know, um, push was by, um, it should have been Paul. Paul was holding over it. And then 
Chanel swooped in. Oh, he gave it to Chanel because Chanel had been wanting to press the button. And then she got punishment. <laughs> to be fair, the punishment actually wasn't that bad. All she had to do was choose someone, choose the person that she'd spoken to the least in the last 24 hours. And then Big Brother made her handcuff herself to that person. And she had chosen Yinran. So I don't think it was that much of a punishment for Chanel because I think Chanel and Yinran do get on. They just probably haven't had that many conversations in the last 24 hours. But... I just thought, how funny was it that Paul could have been handcuffed to Noki for the next 24 hours and that would have been so funny. Or he could have been um, handcuffed to Trish. That would have been even funnier considering what potentially has happened in the house, um, what happened during the house potentially during late in life, which I will get to in just a moment. It's been just a moment and we're back. So um, what happened on late in life, you may ask? Well, um, they cut to the house. And Chanel was looking there like she'd just witnessed World War Three. Um, I think somebody was in the kitchen and then Yinran came over and Dylan was like hovering in the background. And then the audio was picking up Trish shouting at someone, you're a bully, and then singing, you are a bully or something like that. And just going off on one. So like, I don't know what's happened, but a lot of suspicious things have happened um, that make me feel like it's either bigger than it is or ITV are making it out to be bigger than it is. So the the suspected person that she's arguing with is Paul. Um, a Paul's voice is heard briefly on the video, so obviously it can be assumed. However, they posted the video on their Twitter and then they took it down. And then the other suspicious thing is that... Um, where am I going with this? There was no live stream last night. The live stream was up, but it was three hours of just like camera shots and like ceiling shots, wall shots, how empty house still shots, and then bird noise. So we genuinely have no clue what went on in that house last night. And from the sounds of it, it could be quite serious. There's been loads of different speculation on Twitter. Some people are claiming that Paul has been seen outside of security. Some people are, are, are claiming that Paul has been ejected and it could throw the double eviction into sort of disarray. And there are other people that are sort of speculating that Trish could have been removed. Someone's been isolated. I don't know what's happened. However, all I know is that if it is not as big as it seems and they edit it down or they edit it out of tomorrow's live show, I'm going to be incredibly disappointed and it's going to be a bit of a shit time. I won't lie. I just think if you've got something as dramatic as a huge argument rocking the house, surely you would want people to be able to watch it live and then watch the like what happened on the show as well, the build up to it. Like, I would, I would much rather watch the aftermath and then watch what le led up to it because I feel like that's so interesting. But clearly, something happened in the house last night where they couldn't show anything on live stream. I don't think it was a case of they didn't want to because we've seen them show sort of visuals of the housemates, but just with the bird noise. But they genuinely did not show a single shot of what was actually happening inside the house. So clearly, something's gone on. What happens? I don't know. We'll find out in tonight's eviction show. I have a few iconic moments that I wanted to point out. The first one was Trish and Henry dancing in the rain. It was just really cute and really cool to see them sort of dancing and enjoying life. And I feel like Trish has taken the evic the sort of nomination to for eviction really, really well. Um, better than some other housemates. But um, yeah, it's not her first time on the block, to be fair. So maybe she's just taken it in her stride. Next was when Jenkin was tidying up the bedroom and he was sort of plumping people's pillows and he found a chocolate bar under someone's pillow. I can't remember whose bed it is, but um, he found the chocolate bar and just nicked it and went, yep, find his keepers, which I think fair enough. If you're being made to do a maid job, might as well steal a chocolate bar while you're at it. Jordan continues to have just the wildest things that he says. And he was talking to Henry whilst he was um, on the double on the date with him and he was talking about the time when he was stood up and he mentioned how he went to pizza hut and got stood up 
I actually, do you know what? I do, I do really like Jordan and I feel like we must protect at all costs. However, just those one-liners that he comes out with and it was just, it was just the absurdity of it being a Pizza Hut that really chuckled me. Chuckled me? Really made me chuckle. Um, and then there was some like weird wrestling moments later on and it was funny whilst I was watching it and then I was like, wait, that was like the weirdest like couple of minutes I've ever watched in my whole life. I think like Jordan and Henry were kind of wrestling with each other and then Matty just decided to join in and then Trish ended up joining in and it was just a whole palaver in the bathroom. But it admittedly, it was quite entertaining to watch, especially with, I think Henry was like right at the bottom, which sounds about right. Um, but yeah, funny part of the episode. So that's all we've got time for today. Thank you guys very, very much for watching and I will see you guys tomorrow for the live eviction. Something dramatic has happened in this house and I'm fully ready to, to like experience it. It's going to be an interesting episode. I'm ready. Right, see you guys later. Keep on ranting. Bye now.